So Motorola is rather, shall we say, prolific when it comes to spunking out budget-friendly smartphones. We just had the Moto G53 and the G73, and now they've been joined by this fresh new pair under £200 here in the UK, the Moto G13 and G23. Despite this low price, they serve up some respectable specs, including a massive 5,000 mAh battery, Dolby Atmos stereo speakers, and 50 meg cameras. Snazzy. And there is quite a big price difference between the two. The G13 costs £149 versus the £199 G23. So what's the difference and are they worth that cash? Well, here's a full unboxing and side-by-side -side comparison for you. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So first, what's in them boxes? Well, you've got yourself, of course, a Motorola Moto G13 and G23. And as you can see there, they actually come pre-wrapped in plastic condom cases for your protective needs. You've also got yourself an adapter bundled in there. And the Moto G23 one is the big boy of the bunch because that supports 33 watts charging versus the piddly 10 watt charger of the Moto G13. And you've also got yourself a USB charging cable. And that's everything you get chucked in the box, nice and simple and straightforward. All right, I'm just going to get these things out of the condom case before we begin. We want them raw and naked. So here we go again, more budget Motorola phones. Ugh. I'm getting a serious sense of deja vu here, having only just covered the G53 and G73, because these handsets look very, very similar indeed. That design, as you can see there, pretty much identical. They're both 6.5 inch blows, weighing a wee bit over 180 grams. Not the absolute chunkiest bezels surrounding those displays that I've ever seen on smartphones, but you've got a little bit of fat lip action. And quite flat edges as well, just tapering off ever so slightly towards the arse end and that display. Flip them around and unsurprisingly it's a placky back and again these phones could basically be clones. The only real difference between them is the colour. Both of them come in matte charcoal while the G13 is also available in this here rose gold as well as lavender blue. While the G23 goes for steel blue or this here pearl white. And both of these motor blowers are water repellent as well but don't get too carried away thinking you can take them down the local wet and wild. That basically just means they get a little bit splashed and they should be okay. And with Motorola smartphones, you know exactly what you're getting yourself into with the software. It's a pretty stock version of the latest, freshest Android 13 here. They haven't really tinkered with the UI, so it looks similar to Nokia smartphones, those Pixel phones, of course. Unfortunately, unlike a lot of other Motorola budget blowers, you don't get the excellent Moto Experiences app here on the G13 or the G23, completely missing in action. Mercifully, however, Motorola has still chucked in a couple of the best features from the Moto Experiences app, including the double karate torch chop. And of course, you can still customize the G13 and the G23 with your very own wallpapers, change up the theme and colors, etc. But if you want a gaming mode, no, there's none of that. And both the Moto G13 and the Moto G23 come with a choice of 64 or 128 gigs of storage. And normally I'd say, yeah, definitely upgrade if you shoot a lot of photos, videos, etc. But the good news is that both Motorola handsets do offer a bit of micro SD memory card expandability. And the memory cards actually slip into an individual slot as well, separate from the SIM card slot. So you can still have two SIMs in there and a micro SD memory card, job done. And for your security needs, well, you've got an edge mounted fingerprint sensor on both of these blowers built into those skinny wee power buttons, seems to do the job perfectly fine and that's backed up by a good bit of face unlock. Now as far as I can tell there's absolutely bugger all difference when it comes to the displays on these two Motorola phones as well. We're talking 6.5 inch LCD panels here and it is just an HD plus resolution on both the G13 and the G23 which is a might disappointing because you certainly can get budget smartphones for under £200 with a full HD plus display and Motorola even offers one itself the Moto G32. Still, while you certainly don't get the finer details afforded by a Full HD panel here, you know, it's absolutely fine for your bit of Netflixing or YouTube or whatever. Of course, at this price point, you can't expect OLED tech. It is just basic LCD tech. So that does mean that viewing angles aren't fantastic. The colors do warp quite significantly when you turn that display away from your face. You'll also find that the contrast isn't quite as sharp. Those colors aren't quite as poppy. But besides that, no real complaints. And when you do go full screen for your bit of YouTube, Netflix, whatever, there's only a tiny bit of intrusion from that selfie cam orifice. And you've also got yourself a stereo speaker set up on both the G13 and the G23. Let's test them out, see if they're any good. Why not with a bit of Motorola unboxing action? So first, the Moto G13. So Motorola certainly wants to retain its title as the most prolific smartphone manufacturer in 2023. They've already spun out four new phones. And now the Moto G23. 
Today we're going to be checking out this bad boy here, the Moto G53 5G, which will cost you 189 British puns. And as far as my knackered old lugs can tell, that's basically identical audio output. Not the loudest around, has to be said. You might be struggling to hear what's going on if you're trying to watch a video in a noisy kitchen or a busy outdoor environment. But the quality ain't too bad for a sub £200 smartphone and it's reasonably balanced sound as well. The earpiece is actually doing a bit of work there. And yes, you've got a bit of Dolby Atmos support on both the G13 and the G23 as well. In fact, Motorola has even proudly slapped the Dolby Atmos logo up on the top edge of both the G13 and the G23. And oh, look, what's this just to the side of that? Our old mate, the 3.5mm headphone jack. Good to see you again, buddy. Shame you're not on those more premium, super expensive smartphones, eh? So that's great news for anyone who enjoys a bit of high fidelity audio. Otherwise, you've also got Bluetooth 5.1 wireless streaming. Now, both the Moto G13 and the G23 are powered by the same chipset, the MediaTek Helio G85, with 4 or 8 gigs of RAM in the G13, while the G23 only comes in that 8 gig flavour. Now, my G13 is the 4 gig model, and yet I didn't really find any difference in the overall smoothness with the everyday experience, just, you know, opening apps, flipping as fast as I could through the various Android menus. And certainly when testing them out with a bit of Geekbench 6 action, the scores for single core and multi core were very similar indeed. And likewise, when I tested out a bit of light gaming on both of these phones, I found that the G13 handled Call of Duty Mobile just as ably as the G23. You can only play this online Murderthon with the lower graphics settings, of course, because that Helio G85 is rather limited. But I didn't really see any judders or stumbles in that frame rate. The displays were certainly responsive enough to handle all of that hyper-reactive action, although if you're up against any decent competition you might struggle a bit. Thankfully I seem to find myself mostly up against complete numpties who just like to run in my general direction without actually bothering to, you know, fire their guns or anything. But as I mentioned before, sadly Motorola's Game Time Gaming Mode not available here, so you will have to, you know, manually activate, do not disturb, things like that when you are gaming. And also that Helio G85 does not come with a 5G modem, so there's no 5G support on these blows. If that's a deal breaker for you, definitely go check out that G53 instead. And if you do like to virtually perforate strangers online in the likes of Call of Duty all afternoon long, well, the good news is that you probably won't run out of battery life on either of these phones because the G13 and the G23 sport a 5,000 mAh cell. Now combine that big old battery with the fairly energy efficient chipset and the stock version of Android and you've got great battery life. Basically, if you're only messaging, web browsing, stuff like that on these phones, you'll last about two days between charges. Otherwise, even if you're absolutely hammering them with loads of video streaming, gaming, camera play, etc., you should still hopefully last the full day until you're tucked up with Teddy before you need to plug them in. And as I mentioned when I first pulled these budget blowers out of the boxes, the Moto G13 only supports very piddly 10 watt charging, although I believe in some regions that is upgraded to 20 watts. Whoa. Meanwhile, the G23 is a wee bit nippier with its 30 watt charging. Turbo power indeed. And anyway, let's finish this Moto G13 and G23 unboxing with a squint at the camera tech. And what you have on these Moto G phones is the same 50 megapixel primary camera sensor. Using the same phase detection autofocus, you've got the same Moto camera app with the same toggles and features. And here's just a few test samples that I snapped around the old homestead. As you can see, a bugger all difference when it comes to the picture quality. Both phones do struggle with living subjects like cats and kids that refuse to stay still. But for sub £200 smartphones, they don't do a terrible job in low light. You've got a reasonable amount of colour in there. Not too much grain creeping in unless things get proper dark. You've got all the usual bonus camera modes, of course, including a bit of portrait mode action. You can change up the bokeh if you like. Blur out that background and get the focus entirely on your subject. In this case, the lovely Veronica and a somewhat eclectic choice of makeup. You've also got yourself a full-on dedicated pro mode where you can piddle about with the likes of the white balance, the ISO levels. You can even shoot in RAW format if you want to edit on the fly. The only other difference is that the Moto G23 offers an ultra wide angle lens. It's a basic 5 megapixel effort, but can be quite handy if you're trying to fit something absolutely massive into frame, like a bloody big cathedral or Elon Musk's ego. And you've also got a 2 meg macro effort here on the G23. You'll also find that on the G13, along with a depth sensor, no ultra wide angle effort on that G13. If you want to shoot some home movies, well, you can capture full HD resolution footage on the G13 and the G23. You've got a single mic on the G13 for your audio pickup. It's actually a dual mic setup on the G23, so a bit better at picking up audio from all around you. Other than that, no real difference. 
And then if we flip to the front, the Moto G13 sports an 8 megapixel selfie camera that's upgraded here on the G23 to a 16 mega. Seems to be making me look a bit more pink than I am in real life. And this certainly does capture more facial detail, which may or may not be a plus thing, depending on how many wrinkles and sags you have. They do an okayish job in uh, high contrast situations and in low light you do have the screen flash feature to light you up. And you can once again shoot up to full HD resolution footage on both of these phones, starting with the Moto G13 here, and then swapping here to a bit of the Moto G23. So yeah, if you want to do a bit of vlogging, Skyping, Microsoft Teams and all that good stuff, no worries. And that right there, my lovelies, in a tidy little nutshell, is how the Motorola Moto G13 stacks up against the G23. And I've got to say, if you're on a really tight budget, you can't quite stretch to the G23. Don't worry about it, because you're not really missing out on too much. G13 is just as capable, despite having half the memory stashed in there. The camera tech is essentially the same. You're only missing out on a crappy ultra-wide angle lens. Slightly faster charging on the G23, and that's about it, really. Of course, neither blower offers a bit of 5G action. You want to look to like the Moto G53 if you want a bit of that. And you do have the basic HD plus displays as well, unlike the Moto G32. Now, I am going to round up my pick of the best sub £200 budget blowers in 2023. So stay tuned for a video on that imminently. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell so you don't miss all of that shenanigans. Be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below and have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers!